Hello to whoever may be there. Welcome to yet another work stream. I just as an update to where we're at here, uh, one of my main uh, TJ asked for a lot of strain information. He is uh, apparently sick and dying right now. So I uh, am at, uh, got some gaps in information that I need filled in, but with even without that, uh, I've got another two and a half pages of Roach's catalog, and uh, I haven't even started isopods for the site work. Hello, everybody who is here. Uh, Joseph, Casey, Casey Bass, Casey Bass, Orang Mango, Jojo Bugs, LC, Alan. Hello, everybody. I don't know how much public input I'm going to need today uh but maybe i guess i'll have some maybe i'll have some random questions while i'm putting stuff in here again probably gonna be more of a boring stream i'll check back in the chat every once in a while if anybody has any random questions jojo says we're at 666 subs and yes it is the discord notification going in the background uh that's just how it's going to be during these work streams Ooh, interesting uh, some friends in the field right now doing some collecting in odd parts of the country. So that's also going on. So kind of a lot happening. Some bugs came in today. Oh, how devilish. Hello, Chain. Chain, I had a question for you, but I can't. Um, okay, I think I vaguely remember. Chain, you were working with different flat millipedes, right? Answer when you get a chance. I'm going to just start doing some logging in. I'm on... Blabberous. Apparently, TJ looked at the holotypes and stuff for Blabberous Colossius, and our hobby stock of all three strains is not actually Colossius. So, this is a part where. I'm not really sure what to put for the Latin information. Maybe I'll just put species here or that. Um. Uh, about the pseudopolydesmus. All right. Kyle, give us a Discord kitten husbandry guide. It's a, what's a kitten husbandry like for cats? It's a non ironic question. Um, Chano, I, I seen the question mark now. I was just curious. There's some weird millipedes I collected in Foster's or Buell, Alabama last year. Alan was pretty convinced they were oxidus, but we only found them in like really well rotted, uh, like wet wood, and they smelled a little different to me. And I've been like rearing them, and it's n like nine months later now, and they're not even half grown, so they're they're not behaving like oxidus would. So I was curious if you knew of anything from like the southeastern United States that might be similar to Oxidus, but not Oxidus gracilis. Uh, just weird that they're, again, it's been nine months and they did produce for me, but the, they're just taking forever to grow. It's very different from Oxidus that I've collected here in Michigan. I figured that was a place where they're southeastern U.S. There could be tons of weird oddball millipedes that I'm not aware of. So maybe Blabberus Colossius, oh, CF Colossius to indicate that we're not sure. Again, this is where it would be nice to have TJ's input, that they're not actually Colossius. But... We'll just put CF Colossius for now <clears throat> from Panama. Panama basically has the same stats as the ones from Peru, too. Blabber's taxonomy is such a nightmare. No matter what's what's happened the last couple of last decade, it's still a nightmare. Hello, Satchel Watsaki. Um 
the previously used names, Blybris, Colossus, Panama. I guess it's still traded in Europe as Blybris species Panama. So weird situation. This uh, also happened with Eurycotus Lixa. I was looking up the holotype and stuff, and uh, our stock isn't a mat. The holotype is much smaller, even though it's a deformed old specimen. The holotype of Lixa is smaller. It's a different color, which could be from the fact that it's almost 100 years old, but it's very purple. And then comparing the rear leg spines are very different from the spines on the stock that we have. So I'm, I, I grow more convinced that we don't actually have Lixa. We have something else. So, um, again, from the holotype, comparing to the holotype, and then some information, too, from the old publications. So, yeah, that's fun. Keeps happening with stuff. All right. Labrys Colossus. 65 millimeter male, 75 millimeter female. Gigantic adult size. Did we do a Colossus? Nope. This is the first one. Actually, size, I got some nice new metal rulers with millimeters on them. This has been very handy for measuring stuff. Eight, nine millimeter hatchlings. Uh, anything new with anybody else out there? Anything going on? Tyler Headland, good to see you. It's been a while. Uh, oh, comments on the satchel. The paper about the QS one said both them and the holotype are black. It did say the holotype was black. I may, maybe I missed that part. Uh, the size disparity in the the leg spines are still interesting. Uh, and again, we don't have records of Lixa from other keys, just from Key West. Um and also very interesting that the holotype for Lixa was not wild collected. It was they were off of a boat from Jamaica to the U.S. It's like a banana shipment. They described them from that. Uh, a forgot to change my name here to Far Farouche. Um, Lixa, my be alls says Alan. Anyways, yeah, so the taxonomy and everything is uh, crazy, but at least it's not ice. At least it's not isopods. Can at least say that much. That's going to be a whole other can of worms, can of isopods. Um, adults cannot fly. Ove oviviparous. One room or some heat. Uh, airflow, but low or medium. Medium for Colossus, I'm finding. Air humidity, medium. Half dry, half moist. I uh, I think this is going to be very informative for a lot of people when it's done. All of the information here. Not day active. Burrows into substrate. Not picky. Notable adult color. Colossus Panama. Or species Panama. Another tan. A lot of tan blabberids. I've come to find out. It's a pretty common color among them. Same with nymphs being brown. Mm, five gallons for Colossus. You can probably get away with it. Or maybe I should have more than five gallons for a good colony. A lot of blabbers don't like crowding. So, uh, yes, we. I think uh, Chris is working on a dummy site currently to get 
so we can test all the features in the future. Uh, Alan says, Sucks Diana has no pics of Yuri Kodas from Jamaica. Orang Mango says, The Yuri Yuri D I got from you were procreating. Have they have they created or you've just seen the copulating, the copulation? Clarification perhaps needed there. Recommend for handling, yes. Ease of culturing intermediate, not a favorite. No household infestation. South America. Panama's in South America, right? As a Westerner, uh, I guess it's, it's both. It's technically both North and South America. It's the Isthmus. All right. All right then, and thus it will it will have to be uh, North and South America. Not available. Acquired from. Where did these come from? Where did my. From whom did I acquire Blabberus colossus Panama? Blabber Blabber species. Panama from was it Ty or Alan? I don't really remember where these came from. I remember it was around it was when I was moved in with my ex, so it would have been I would have had them in two thousand. Sixteen at the latest, so probably from double D's. Sounds about right. Double D's. Dot org. It's uh, only a handful of people that a lot of bugs come from. <clears throat> I gotta find it. Oh, I'm scrolling up chain. I'm seeing I have us uh, the. Hemithersostra paleata I have acquired from you in 2023 from the group that you sent me. Because I write the uh, I write the most for the, the strain acquisition. I write the most recent link in the daisy chain. I think that Dexter and Double D's were still around in 2015. So but circa two that had to have been around then. Had to have been. It's fun things trace tracing all this stuff. And by fun I mean it's when you have direct leads, it's nice, but when you can't figure stuff out, it's frustrating. All right, only copulation says all right, Mango. Well, that's the first step. Should be babies very soon after. Were they the Auburn ones or were they from Bryceville or was this the Dick Hagler Road population? Chain says, I've been seeing pics identified as ogrosilis. I had some odd features and markings, some having noticeably larger phalanges than I've ever seen before. Some may be morphological changes due to isolation. Some could be closely related, but separate species. I'll message after the stream. Um, Yorg, I know where Panama came from. Yes, that may be the one of the ultimate sources, but I'm trying to, there's, I'm listing my immediate sources for stuff. And then trying to trace that strain back as far as possible. So ultimately, they would have originated um, with Yorg. Or the problem with double Ds is I don't know if they came from the person that Yorg would have gotten them from originally. So um, I'll see. I sent some pictures of my skunk roaches. I'll actually take a quick look at that. I haven't been checking the roach crossing email, but I have been checking the other um, the other email. So let me just pull that up really quick. Uh, the enclosure looks fine. What's the ventilation like? 
it looks like there is there condensation or is that just like weird reflection on the glass the enclosure looks fine but if you don't have good top ventilation it might be too humid could be the the problem there i'd also put some more bark in there while well, you show this other picture lots of bark um so it might be too humid uh perhaps incorporate some more um some more if you're not feeding any like dog food or fish flakes type stuff maybe incorporate a little bit more of that into the diet um Anyways, yeah, so all of my uh, Floridana have just completely full top ventilation. There's no, uh, with some roaches, I've been putting polycarbs on for the winter to kind of stop the extra airflow because of how much, how drafty it is in the house and it's hot, dry air from the furnace. Uh, but I haven't done that for any of the Floridana and they've been doing perfect. Um, uh, let's see. Such so one of the story behind Double D's Colossus. They came from southern Mexico. Uh, no, that was Craniofer, and I would actually really like that line if somebody could find it, um, because supposedly it did come straight from the jungles of Mexico. And if I can contact Dexter somehow, I could actually get a loc an exact locality. But it would have to be the old Craniofer line that he was selling. And somebody would have had to have had the insight to just label it as such. Ray Mango says Auburn. Okay, so that was one that was a captive. Uh, this will be a captive breeding for those your yards uh, for use. Be an F2, F2 captive bred generation then. Uh, Double D's went out of business in like 2016 because you got some stuff from the lab. So, um, all right, Alan has uh, Alan has reminded me of the colossal roaches origins, so I'm going to um, I'm going to mark that in my sheet here. All right, it's marked. In a non-doxing manner. Uh, was a big K. Hello. Thank you for that. Uh, Jonathan says, hi, Kyle. Hi, everyone. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this Again, this is, uh, I would say I'm not getting stuff done here, but I'm getting good line tracing going on, so that's good. Next, we're on to my Luki Hormetica Subkincta. Uh, no locality. Is anybody keeping the straight localities of uh, Luki Hormetica Viracosa? I actually kind of want to get those now. I had heard some of them were stateside. I would like to get some of those. There's like Venezuela and Colombia. Um, we're also going to start labeling the old like U.S. hobby stock lines of things. I think TJ was calling them like we were going to have abbreviations like uh, UHS, USHS, or something for like, you know, United States hobby stock. And we got to solidify. So I got to talk to some other roach folk to see what we want to use for that. But that'll be good for things as we go into the future of uh, people being better at keeping track of lines as they come in. That's really the best thing to do it is the second it gets acquired is to distribute it with that information attached to it. Um, what was what's the common name for Subkincta? It's just Glow Spot Roach. We really need a descriptor because Glow Spot is the genus Luki Hormetica. So what does Subkincta mean? It means below something. Kincta meaning. Kinkta surrounded, encircled, reed the crowned, um, belted, girdled. So what does subkinkta mean together? The meaning of subkinkta is not known. 
Um, maybe an subkinctorium, a vestment consisting of an ornamental square of cloth suspended from the girdle and worn by the Pope. Okay. Anybody here uh, a little bit more versed in Latin for figuring out what subkincta means? Be very handy, I think. <clears throat> it's a couple of things that are described with subkincta. Oh, it's a lemur subspecies. What does it mean, though? Again, sub means below. It's the below crowned or part partially crowned, ring crowned. Um, you know, on the pronotum, the cream marking on the males doesn't seem to go all the way around on the pronotum. It stops at the anterior, sorry, the posterior, it stops. I wonder if that's what in re it's in reference to. But uh, the subkinctorium is an ornamental vestment reserved for the Pope. Yeah, so it's it's, it's got to be something like that. It's very interesting. The subkinctorium. But what is it? How does it, how does it, uh, how does it, what does it mean? In Latin. Subkingere, past participle subkingere, to tuck up or gird about. Uh... This is a lot of stuff. Worn by the Pope on sub. We're getting into some deep, deep levels of something here, guys. But uh, this is good for picking. We got a. We need a descriptor for this common name. Glow spot roaches is genus Luki Hormatica. Now we got to figure out subkincta, the girdled roach. But again, it's subkincta. There's an additional piece of information there in the sub. If it was just Luki Hormetica kincta, we could just call it a day. But there's the pap the papal roach, the valid papacy roach. Um, let me look up some images of subkincta. See, here's Dan's old pictures. Here's some pictures of hybrids. Oh, never mind, not hybrids. Sorry, Marshall Arachnids. I saw your picture and I didn't see that there was a clear indication there was uh, some kinkta and varicosa next to each other. But it really is looking, in all these images I'm seeing of subkincta, that that cream border around the pronotum does not, um, does not extend to the uh, posterior of it, even on the females. Huh. Dan's uh, Limberlost Exotics doesn't seem to be up right now. I was looking at Dan's pictures. But, uh, so it's like, uh, I really, I really think that's what it's in uh, reference to from all the images that I'm seeing. Again, I would just go check my colonies, but that would involve getting up, and I don't want to do that unless I need a measurement right now. So just call it the glow spot roach and call it a day. No, that's how we get into situations like people having hybrids of stuff. We need more descriptors for the lay folk to de decrease the chances. It's all about adverse outcome reduction. Adverse outcome possibility reduction. So, but I really am trying to figure out what a good way to say this, because I am pretty much convinced that's what it's in reference to is the fact that, that on the pronotum, the 
cream border does not extend to the posterior. It doesn't connect posteriorly. So let's see if there's any pictures on INET for reference, just of the clade even. This is showing some pretty individuals of subkincta in the wild with red pronotum markings. That's pretty cool. Don't don't really see that too thoroughly in the captive stock. It could be a diet thing too. But uh, from all these wild pictures of subkincta, it's looking pretty consistent that that posterior margin does not connect. So now to find some way to say that. It's like a tiara almost. Laterally bordered a glow spot roach. Yeah. It's uh, optimizing, finding something that's descriptive, but not a mouthful. Although I don't really mind making really mouthful uh, common names because then it forces people to use headlight roach. Yeah, they also use a bunch of other weird common names for things. The point of the the point of the common name is that people use it commonly when talking to each other, uh, and some of them it's like scarfed roach. It's not quite a scarf. It's more like a tiara. What does that look like? I'll find uh, in the headlight roach. There's multiple members of that genus. Do they? Do they? Okay, glow spot roaches. They call the genus glow spot roaches, but they call subkinta the headlight roach, but they all have headlights. Uh, autofluorescence. Um... Yeah, is there anything that's like that? It's like a headband or something, but again, all we have is the sub subkingtorum. I'll post the uh, I'll post one of these pictures just so people can see what's uh, what's being discussed here. I've got to find a good one that really illustrates it. Right from the wilds. Here's a good one. Can I copy the link? Open a new tab, copy image link. I'll link that right here. Kinky headlamp roach, glow spot roach V2. Looking at the papal vestments. So in this image, which it doesn't seem to do a hyperlink, but you can copy paste. You guys have phones, right? Nope, never mind. I'm going to try and delete that because I can't. Uh, I just need to... Freaking emoji stuff is in the way. How do I get rid of it? I just want to delete that. Delete this. Oh, let's see if I can do this again. Open image in the tab. Maybe it goes. Maybe it doesn't. It's what a nightmare. Is that the same link? Maybe it does. Maybe it does connect. Yeah, it does connect. Never mind. All right. So you can see, if you look at the pronotum, there's that that bordering of cream whitish color that wraps from the front to the back, but it does not connect at the back. It stops. I think that's what the subkincta is in reference to, is the fact that this kinctus, this, this band, does not... Can, it's it's just below being a it's below being a kinkta. It's below that, I think. Where the girdling, the bordering, stops. So, the kinky headlamp roach. Uh, the the American Cockroach Society would have a field day with that. This is actually pretty important because this is a common species. So I'm hoping we can figure something out here. Girdled, half girdled. It's not very pleasant. Subkinctate is a descriptive. That is not a word in the English language yet to describe this very specific 
situation. Pale bordered glow spot roach, intermittent glow spot roach. Uh, the broke banded, broke bordered, broken bordered. Again, I just use Latins where everywhere possible that I can, but this is, uh, well, I'll just keep filling out the information, let things uh, percolate here in the discussion. While I grab the info for some kinked off the site and re redigitize it. How big are those newborns? They're like that. It's like six millimeters. All life stages can. Oh, sorry. Only. Where would I say this? Adults of both sexes. Only adults of both sexes can climb. Adults cannot fly. Ovoviviparous, warm room or some heat. Airflow, not picky. Air humidity, not picky. Substrate humidity. Probably more in the completely moist, perhaps, substrate depth. Um, let's see how much I recommend in inches. Three inches is fine. It's one to three inches. Not day active. Burrows into substrate. Not picky for food. Notable adult. I've, I've yet again changed the, the, the color scheme uh, for the roaches and have changed it was when I say prominent predominant etc um, adult color I've now decided to call it notable so notable adult color a little bit more catching that uh, subjective aspect of things I was talking about notable nymph color purple not Florida legal, not a hissing cockroach, little to no cold tolerance, one to five gallon enclosure. So uh, I feel like uh, maybe that will change again. I'll go from notable to something else. So let's see. Use these for display for uh, pets, not for feeders, would not recommend, and for hobby. Recommend for handling, yes. No willingness to fly. Care, intermediate. Roach crossing favorite. Oh, I do like my subkinked. Uh, I don't know if it's enough for me to go out of my way to say favorite. I will not say that for Varicosa, and I should probably list a Luki Hormetica. So I'm going to say yes if I have to choose between the two of them. Cannot infest. No diapause needed. South America for range. Strain history. None available, but mine were acquired from Matt, a user by the name of Matt K. Circa 2010. It's a different world back then. Very different world. Hmm. And I don't really recommend getting them in pairs anymore either. People don't really seem to have the best of luck with just pairs of glow spots of any species. Although I did start my colony of Aracosa from one female, so there's that. Um, intermittent belted banded sashed says Casey for the subkinkta names crowned wreathed wreathed might be a good one 
uh, laurel wreath. Let's see what sort of that. Uh, you know, it is. It is. I breathed is pretty descriptive. Wreath is a is a very specific shape. Although you know, sometimes they complete it. Um, but it is. They are wreathed. Part wreathed. And it's it's just stops at the back. It's more like a tiara, but wreath is a uh, wreath is pretty good. Let's see if there's any synonyms that may be useful. Wreathed, fringed, emblazoned, garlanded, sequined, embossed, bejeweled. Um, not really anything. That seems like a good layman's replacement. Uh, interwoved, fringed, garlanded. What was like? I would. I don't, I, garlands? No, not really. Reeds is pretty. Princess Diana Roach. Do roaches like lemons? Usually no, unless they're really fermented. They're very acidic. Uh, so roaches usually don't like them. If you have a big enough colony, you could probably feed them a lemon, though. Um, punctuated. Um, that way you work in Princess Diana roach. That way you work in the crown and the <laughs> and the <laughs> and the headlights. I'd say it's too soon, but it's been like what twenty years, something crazy like that. Um, you 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 tickled my funny bone in the worst way today, Jonathan Green. You've got a you've got you've got an interesting sense of humor. Uh, anybody feel like wreathed is too much or lacks something? Anybody think that? Any strong thoughts on wreathed? The wreathed glow spot roach. Thoughts, questions, comments, concerns. Now for, let's see. Varicosa, I'll probably have to denote that it's the U.S. hobby stock because it did not come with locality. And for some reason, I turned up the locality stock from Double D's back in the day. I think it was I think it was probably too expensive at the time for little old me. At the time, U.S. Hobby, common names, warty glow spot again. Varicosa meaning veiny or warty. So we already have a glow spot roach. That has a descriptive adjective. Any any more thoughts? Any other ideas on on subkinctas? Wreathed, crowned. It's not really a crown though, because it doesn't go all the way around. So wreathed reminds me of like the laurel wreathed. Laurel wreaths on the the whole victory stuff. Little Kyle couldn't handle the double D. Uh, no, I could not handle their their very large and ever expanding inventory at the time, and I still wish that I had found a way to get Derapeltis erythrocephala because for some reason that species is the most commonly observed one in the genus on iNaturalist, with like hundred maybe over a hundred hundred and sixty seven or something observations versus all the other Derapeltis only have like ten to thirty each. It's been in culture overseas in one way or another since like 2005 i think it's even in the all pet roaches book it's mentioned the old one uh with recephala um and derapeltis they're pretty fecund when your conditions are good you can crash a culture easily but when you're breeding them you have a whole bunch of them so i don't know why it hasn't ever popped up again in the U.S. since like 2009 or something. And I really want to keep that species so bad. But anyways, maybe one day before I die, I'll get to see it. And I'll be like, yeah, that's pretty cool. That was worth waiting 30, 30 years for. Oh, it's ridiculous when I say it out loud like that. Um, so I guess 
unless anybody has strong opinions, pro or con uh, for read the glow spot, Roach, I'll put that in for uh, Subkinkta. Read the Laurel Glow Spot Roach sounds easy and accurate to me. So Laurel Laurel was Laurel the past tense Laurel bestow an award or praise upon um I think read is good. I think read is good. So, I'm pending anybody having severe objections, uh, which I will leave. We'll leave it up to discussion. Um, anyways, working on Luki Hormetica Viracosa's page now. And this is just the... I'm still on just the hard numbers, guys. Size, shape, preferences, all this other stuff. For each species. So I can just copy paste all the information from uh, Subkinta for Varicosa, basically. Go back and edit it. It's a nice thing with some species I can do that, but then I gotta make sure I edit everything properly so I don't mix up the information. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Notable nymph color orange on the subadultish nymphs. Note that. Display pet hobby, handling, roast crossing favorite. No, unfortunately, it loses out to the read the glow spot roach. Unfortunately, uh, household infestation potential none. No diapause needed. South America for range strain history none available. Acquired from double D's dot org circa 2009. I remember because I did a show and tell for open house night in high school where I brought some roaches. I remember bringing uh, Elliptorina javanica at the time and... Um, what else did I bring? I don't, maybe I brought Viracosa, but I remember the two of those species together because I got them at the same time from Double D's. So they were in like the same box or the same, like within the same three boxes of each other. And I remember I was down to one adult female at some point. Maybe I only got a pair of Viracosa. <clears throat> and I was down to just the female and then the female had babies one day and then that was the the culture it's all from that one female varicosa from like 2009 it's pretty crazy uh lc what do whitehorn hissers like so i'm recommending they be kept more humid but with some airflow now i've had poor results with just a full open top during the winter time and uh but also without enough ventilation during the summertime when it's more air humid, uh, poor results. So now I'm recommending that they sort of have a medium level of humidity uh, in the air and sort of medium airflow too. So um, in terms of conditions, and they like to be warm, definitely like to be warm. Uh, they're not portentosa where you can keep them at like room temperature and still get some good results. They definitely like to be warm. And TJ and I were talking about oblonganota and how you uh, you see a lot of reports for different hissers on iNaturalist, and you can kind of be like, oh, yeah, that could be, that's probably Princesia, and that's Portentosa, and that's this and whatever, you just, just from looking at them. You know, you can't say with absolute certainty, but you have a pretty good idea. Um, did I already type this one in? No, I did not. Uh, anyways, but there's there's nothing for uh, oblongonota. There's there's like no reports of oblongonota anywhere. 
on uh, iNaturalist. I guess I'll do a quick peek through here. But we're we're actually wondering if, based on, I know, sh strictly uh, conjecture, um, we're wondering if they could be uh, in some sort of trouble in the wild. You know, I'm looking at different uh, HISA reports on here. That's that is definitely a uh, Princessia. You know, I'm seeing some pictures that look a lot like our hobby stock from this one area here of stuff. So stripey. Anyways, um. But yeah, it's uh, out of all the reports on iNaturalist, we can't find any for Oblongonota. Oh, that looks like an Elliptorina, not Gromphodorina. I bet my life on that one. <clears throat> so we're, uh, again, we're wondering if Oblongonota might be in some taxonomic peril. Or, uh, sorry, uh, uh, not taxonomic. But, I mean, it is in tax. Gromphodorina is in taxonomic peril. We're wondering if the taxon could be imperiled in the wild based on the fact that there seem to be absolutely no images of the species <clears throat> from... Uh, oh, wait. Here's one that says of long enough. Here's one. Here's one that, that could also be Grandadiri also. So it's not really a smoking gun, I guess. But... Uh, Anyways, um, yeah, so let's see what else we can get to here. We should not start looking at Hisser images on INAT. I'll be here all night doing that. We uh, Our Aileropoda and Cygnus are much less colorful than the wild stock. I don't know if it was called out of the original stuff that was brought into culture or if we just, like, unlucked out and got the least colorful of the Aileropoda, but wild Aileropoda and Cygnus are much uh, prettier than captive stock. Got a lot more uh, yellow and sort of saturation to their uh, colors. It's very interesting. Uh, we need the Grand D. Zen Monkey says Founder Effect. Yes, I have no doubt that Founder Effect is at play with some of these things. But not always. There was a speculation that our uh, our tiger hissers, which I will be listing as Princessia CF Van Weerbeckai, as of my conversations with TJ, because we think that there are two separate clades of Van Weerbeckai in culture, and this is the best way to uh, do that. Get all this stuff will be on the website. It's a lot of a lot of changes. It's going to take all. We're we're all in this together. We're all in this together, folks. We're gonna get. Uh, we're gonna get. We're gonna survive. If we if we stick together, we'll survive uh, roach labeling changes. However, the isopod people will not survive the isopod labeling changes. In best case scenario, it's gonna wreck their whole system. And worst case scenario, it's gonna be extremely convoluted and uh, bad for sales. So. <laughs> um, Libraries. Atropos. Now we're on to Atropos, Florida. The strain didn't have any uh, additional names, though, so I'm just going to put none. Okay. So go on and grab my Atropos information. So Blabberus, again, Blabberus, the situation is just getting worse. Basically for uh, stuff that we Stuff that we have labeled, it's like, well, Blackwing, Cranifer, Dicecoid, Alice, Giganteus, and, like, Boliviensis, I think, are all the ones I looked at that are safe. Pretty much everything else is going to be un unidentified now or reverted to being unidentified. It's just, uh, it's crazy. It's also interesting that we have IDs for you, Blabberus, but not for Blabberus for stuff. We, uh, we no longer have a label. New Labyrus in the uh, U.S. culture. Four millimeters. What's that give us for size? It's a large roach. Uh, I need to copy my Dicecoid care information. We'll use the 
Redlands column for that. Also, hello, Zen Monkey. I just noticed you, you snuck in here at some point. Welcome. I hope you're... Uh, <laughs> I hope you're suffering as much as I am with all of this stuff because it's been a slog. It's been a nightmare is what it's been, in all honesty. I never thought that days could just pass by like minutes, but they have been, and it's horrible. Could it also be the caffeine I've been having, but, you know. All right, uh, Blabber CFA Tropos, blah, blah, blah. Notable adult color. We're going to do black for Shinigami because of the pronotum mark. Florida legal, yes. Blah, blah, blah. Pet feeder hobby. Um, I'm going to put research in there too because we need somebody to actually look into what they are. Um, beginner, Dutch Crossing favorite, yes. Blah, blah, blah. Um, created at Roach Crossing. Need to find what lang language I used here. I, I guess it has been, it's not really been isolating though. It's not like a singular trait. Let's see which one I use that for. Um, let's see if I use this. I guess I... Uh, have I used the word created before? Yes, I have. Not at, created by Roach Crossing. More sophisticated sound. Okay, I'm going to release the line the next year so I can put that it was created in 2024 and then the details for how long it took. Basically been working on that line since I got the stock and it's still not perfect. All right, there we go. Maybe it'll be perfect with another decade of work on the uh, black lab, labrus atropos. I don't suffer from inanity. I enjoy every minute of it. That's lovely, uh, Zen Monkey. The horrors persist, but so am I. Uh, Elsie says, I have lots of adult ivory roach, but no babies. Anything I could give or feed them to help. Uh, how long have they been adults for? If they just matured, it will take a little while for them to start having babies. The first litter takes the female the longest. It takes her about maybe a month or two, uh, even longer than uh, future litters. But once she started reproducing, she will re the 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 rate of the frequency of babies goes up because she's no longer internally maturing. Okay, that's a bit long. Uh, you could add more. You could add more heat. Uh, I'd have to see your setup too. Maybe it's just if it's sopping wet, they don't really like that. They're not very picky, but they really don't like to be sopping wet. You could feed more dog food. It could be more fat or, uh, God forbid, more protein they need. Um, it could be too dry, although uh, Distanti really takes quite a bit of dryness and quite a bit of ventilation when it's dry too. But if it's okay, it is moist. You could... You know, you could do top ventilation, see if that changes things, and uh, maybe incre increase increase the quality of the food as well. You could do that, too. Uh, let's see. Latin name, Dorlea orani. Orin's Roach. Locality, I have to ask Orin where they came from. Uh, what do I have? Or orange zebra striped roach. Orange zebra roach. Okay. Previously used names none. Um, I'm actually appalled at how long I've had Orin I going for. I didn't. 
I didn't think I'd get this far when I first failed with them like three times, and now I'm pretty sure I'll have them forever. So, adult size, small, hatchling slash newborn size, they're pretty small. They're about it's like five millimeters, six millimeters. Uh, birth to adult, about six to nine months. Adult lifespan. You know, they're pretty long-lived. I'm going to put one to two years. Maybe six to 12 months is more accurate, but one to two years or in special sauce roach. Maybe I'll make a footnote about that, uh, those shenanigans. Gestation slash incubation, two to four months. Climbs, smooth surfaces, yes. All life stages can climb. I don't think they can fly. Cannot fly. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they can't fly. Anybody else who's kept Dora, Leo, or and I know if they can fly? Because I'm pretty sure they cannot. It would be nice to get more members of the genus Dorlea. Airflow. I'm going to put eh, lower medium. Because I did have them with the screen lit off, but they're from Southeast Asia. They probably don't like to be dry, and that might be part of why people don't do well with them. Although I had them dry, or I had them moist before and didn't do well with them. I can't remember what the exact thing I did when I first got them going, and then they just took off. Let's see what uh, Kyle what Kyle of the past says on Roach Crossing. At long last, the glorious orange zebra roach has been bred at Roach Crossing. How triumphant. Uh, blah, 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 named after Oren by Dr. Lewis Roth. Um, consistently moist substrate, plentiful food, and rotten wood and or bark for overposition once established, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I, co I comment that the moist substrate was a, uh, a factor in things. So I'm going to put for airflow, I'm going to put not picky because I have kept them with full ventilation in the past. But for air humidity, I'm going to put high because I would water very frequently. And then for substrate humidity, moist. Um, substrate depth, one to three inches. Not naturally day active. Hides under, it doesn't really hide under loose cover. Climbs decor. Remember our breakthrough last week, everybody. It's already been, reminder, it's already been a week since the last one. You mean the baseless accusations of your youth? Uh, they had some, they had some base, uh, baseness to them, but uh, uh, everybody screws up sometimes. Substrate depth, Asian. <laughs> Hilarious, Alan. Um, preferred foods, not picky. Notable adult color. On Doralina, Doralia, or and I. What would I? What do I say when I first look at them? Probably brown. It's like a reddish brown, but more brown than like Peritonopteryx. So I'm gonna say brown. And then for notable nymph color, um, it's creamy yellow, yellow white. I would say why I would I would. I would go more towards the white end of things than to call them yellow. So I'll say white. Don't take that out of context. <laughs> um, little to no cold tolerance. Space required for a colony. One to five gallons, I'll say. And then for uses. You know, I'll go ahead and recommend them for bioactives just because if they get out, um, you know, a lot of bioactives tend to be more humid. I'm thinking for like dark frogs and rainforest stuff. So I'm actually going to recommend them for bioactives for that reason. Uh, display. You have enough of them. There are always some of them out. Oh, they are they are a little bit more photophobic. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll leave them up for display. Research, because somebody needs to finish describing them. The manuscript is apparently written and was like partially published. Black and yellow, black and yellow. The, the problem is, since it's the nymph color is kind of, it's a secondary sort category and it's not very important. Um, I, I'm only having one primary color there, the notable color. Uh, don't listen to young Kyle. He's notorious for talking people into pet insects. 
Uh, some things never change. Why recommend Dora, Leo, or an I as a pet? You know, since they live a while, I will. I won't recommend them for handling, though. And then, of course, for hobby. So, um, not recommended for handling, but I'll recommend them as a pet. Ease of culturing. I'm going to say advanced. How many people, anybody anybody in the chat have a colony of Dora, Leo, or an I? It's not a very common roach still. Anybody? Some old posts on arachna boards from uh, people. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe yellow for the nymphs. I'll go back and correct that. I don't know how Orin will feel about that, but let's see. Brown and yellow, brown and yellow. Um, somebody from 2011 on the boards asked me about uh, anybody with experience. Recommend, of course, tarantula people asking if they can feed. Tarantula people and chameleon people just love finding the most unoptimized things to feed their organisms. Like they will, they will use mantids as feeders for chameleons, like skipping several trophic levels and feeding mantids instead of just like just feed them crickets or grasshoppers. Like breeding the mantids is so much more work to feed your chameleon. Why are you like this? Uh, roach crossing favorite, not particularly. No infestation. No cold diapause, range of Asia. Um, so they come from Orin via bugs in cyberspace. But I don't know where Orin exactly got them from. So I'm going to put none available for strain history, and then I got them right from Orin in like 2014. Uh, acquired from Orin McMonagall circa 2014. They only feed my Savannah Monitor endangered songbirds. <laughs> Sometimes it's like that. Let's see, pricing discounts. Go ahead and swipe that from this other post here, paste. And they are available. Gotten that out of the way. It's got to be traceable because the guy who sent them to Orin was mad that it got named after Orin. I remember seeing his comments somewhere. Um, Alan, when you when you have time, there's no urgency, but if you could dig up that information, I would love to see it. Um, actually, let's see what All Pet Roaches says. The old Angel Fire page. Oh, yeah. First one, where found Malaysia? So I guess I'll put that for the locality. So Malaysia. I'd be mad if I uh, found a bug and they named it after somebody else. Doesn't that just uh, suck, Alan? That ever happened to you, Alan? You know, you, you, you found a bug and it gets named after somebody else? Gotta love it. Uh, Oren seems to have put that it was named by Dr. Lewis M. Roth of Harvard User University in 2002. Um, so been around since 2002. But the exactness is... I'll have to, I'll have to ask Oren in person. I'll ask Oren in person. Usually he's a bit more talkative that way. All right, Salgenia ragii. Locality, none. 
Straight out cultivar, none. Um, Raggy Eye. Is there a common name for Seljania Raggy Eye? Doesn't really seem to be. Uh, it's difficult. Let's see if TJ's raggy. I have any information with them. I name all my bugs after Alan. Literally, they're all named Alan. I never forget their names. <laughs> Amusing. Uh, I called the. Uh, Saljania inserta is the doubtful parental roach. Inserta meaning unsure, uncertain, obviously. Saljania inserta. So there might be a locality for it somewhere. Doubtful parental roach, so this could be rat raggies. Who's this person, Rag? Raggy Eye. Roth, 1979. Again, must have been named by, uh, named after somebody. Here's a holotype specimen. Paratype, sorry. Huh. I uh, went down a rabbit hole yesterday of identifying Pachnota species, and uh, beetle beetle uh, taxonomy is completely screwed at the subspecies level. It's very arbitrary and ridiculous. But even if it's arbitrary and ridiculous, you need to. You need to take it upon yourself to change any of the honorific common names. Like what? The examples. Anyway, anyways, where I was going with this. Um, oh, I, Satchel, are you making an allusion to what went on with the, the whole birding thing? Is that, uh, that, that what you're suggesting? Uh, anyways... Uh, what was I saying? Uh, beetle subspecies are are completely messed up. I uh, I had to do like I remember. I had to uh, I had to go on like a bunch of um, French, maybe even like French parts of Africa forums and translate, run them all through translate, and then make sure like all the dialogue was like good. But like it, nothing got mistranslated um, for like a couple of like Pachnota species. I had to look up like ranges, cross coordinate forum posts compared to like the very few labeled specimens of stuff that there were digitized. And I can say I did. I'm I'm content with uh, with the ID that I made on the on the stock that I was looking at. Um, I'm, I'm content. I'm satisfied. I think I got it, but, uh, still it was, it was quite the hour and 15 minutes or maybe hour and a half that I spent digging around. But those, again, subspecies, just complete nightmares. They're all arbitrary and, and really, uh, messed up. However, the, those beetle people on those French forums, they knew everything that they were talking about. Like it was, it was all very fleshed out. It was like, yes, it's uh, looks like this, and this is actually found there. And we didn't know that they were, but then I compared this to that, and they're actually a subspecies of this. So even if it looks exactly like that, it's actually the subspecies of this species. And everything was just like, wow, this makes so much sense. Like I don't, there's no like uh, chicanery or anything here. Uh, so, so that was nice to uh, to see, and then made me. Uh, feel bad about like roaches and how it's like oh another blabber species blabber species south america excellent 
throw it on the pile of a country named Blabberus now, I guess. Anyways, anybody have strong feelings about naming Saljani a Ragii? A common name. I will again use the Latin as much as I can, wherever I can, including in emails with normal people buying roaches. Um, oh, I wrote a blog post on Saljani or Ragii. Oh, yeah, that was uh, the parental roaches. I wonder if. Uh, and Ragii's Saljania, giant Saljania, they're bigger than Inserta, but I, they're the largest Panestian roach that I keep, but I don't know if there's, a, well, scratch that, Macropanestia. Uh, Macropanestia definitely dunks on all these suids, but um, it's the largest not gigantic Panestian roach that I keep. Um Maybe I'll just go with a ra rag. I wish I knew how to say this. Raggy. At least we got Blabberus Chalk. CF Chacoensis, Alan. There's like five species of Blabberus in that clade that all look the same. At least we know they're from the Pantanal. We have that information. So I'll just go with uh, Raggy's. Rag? Rag? What? How do you pronounce this? How do you pronounce this name? Raggy? Raj? Rajgay, Rajgi, Rajgi's parental roach. And I'm just now realizing that I don't have measurements for how big Selgenia Ragii is, which sucks because that means I need to go break open a tunnel downstairs to pull out some adults to measure them. We have to do that later. We're going to leave this. Uh, we're going to leave this uh unfilled here i'm gonna have to make a note there we go hatchling newborn size gonna have to leave that unfilled too time from birth to adulthood jeez it felt like forever maybe nine to twelve months let's see this blog post was from february and i had adults did i get them in 2021 Probably 2021 from TJ or Ty Randall, Ty Diagnostics. I think it was TJ that sent them to me. Adult lifespan is probably over two years. Gestation incubation, two to four months. Doesn't climb. Uh, all life stages cannot climb. Adults of both sexes can fly, but it's misleading because when they chew off their wings, when they land, ovo viviparous, warm room or some heat, not picky about airflow, not picky about humidity. Completely moist substrate, one to three inches, not day active, forms, makes permanent tunnels, preferred foods, wood, notable adult color. I think it's brown. And I don't usually see them because they're in their tunnels. It's more black. Okay, the adults are black and the nymphs are brown. Don't actually even know how many I have of this species. Uh, should I say more than? I'm gonna say more than five gallons for they have a nice big colony. Now let's see what I recommend them for. It's like a formicarium, but funner, and you have to worry about them like destroying other formicariums, and they live a long time. Raggy. Nobody has strong opinions on uh on Raggy Saljania. What I recommend for Salgenia and Serta, item 173. Hobby, bioactive, research, and pet. Now you could do a display of Salgenia. You just need a lot of them. 
for them to make their tunnels up against the sides. Um, hobby, not a feeder, not blad of composting, which is a new category coming to Roach Crossing. Uh, recommended for handling. No, because you don't want to bust open their tunnels to pick them up all the time. No willingness to fly, ease of culturing, intermediate, roach crossing favorite. Yes, because of their little antics in the tunnel. I love that. Strain history originated, originates from Martin Merv. Vic circa 2020, I believe, for Seljania Ragii. Acquired from, I want to say it was Thai, Thai Dai Exotics circa 2021. And then pricing is going to be, let's see what TJ has. Raggy is a form of Ragnar in Swedish language. Can't find out how to best pronounce it. Thank you, A, for doing that hard work. I really appreciate it. Um, so obviously there's somebody's name. We're finding out pronunciation is a different story. Regrettably. Hmm. Hmm, I say. Okay. Ragii, if it's Swedish, maybe I'll throw it into Google Translate later and see what it says. If only the AI could figure out the Swedes. If only. All right. Ergala species Borneo, formerly Ergala pilosa, as misidentified by the European hobby. Let's see. It's from Borneo. So now it's Ergala species Borneo. Locality Borneo. Oh, I hate the country level stuff. None. Big Black Beetle Mimic, still a reasonable common name. Previously used names, Ergala Pilosa. This is more information I can get right off of my site. I think it's Hard G. Raggy. Ragge. Two Hard Gs, huh? Uh, anyways, I think I'm going to take a break after I finish the entry for the Ergala. If anybody has any questions or anything they would like to add, any information, etc., please let me know. Uh, I think we might do a live stream next week. I know it's going to be mid-holidays type stuff, but yeah, December 28th. Um, yeah, I should we should have a live stream next week because I have to keep doing this unless I uh, end up taking it off to do isopod husbandry, which could happen because I have to inventory all the isopods too. I have not even started on the isopod lists. Um, this is insane. Uh, how much has to be done? Full stop. Uh, let's see, 35, 37 millimeters for the adults. So it is a small roach. Hatchling slash newborn size is in about the four millimeter range. Time from birth to adults, six to nine months. Adult lifespan. Uh, we're going to say 1 to 12 months because males can be uh, pretty short-lived. 2 to 4 month incubation. Uh, climb smooth surfaces, yes. Only adults of both sexes can climb. Flying abilities. Anybody know if Ergala can fly? Pretty sure I, I put down here that they may be able to fly. It makes sense for uh, Caridia to do that. Um, Grimdark, uh, yes. 
There, I may need some help with some gastropod stuff pending. I, I probably will not put up stuff that I haven't figured out how to breed pretty well. So, like, Belocolis will go up. Um, I've, you know, you, you think that slugs don't need calcium, and then you find out that slugs do need calcium, or um, adding uh, calcium, or rather adding lime to adjust their uh, enclosure soil pH to make it more neutral or more uh, basic is uh is preferred for them the search engine for this is going to be a nightmare to write uh zen monkey i was gonna talk to you about that this is a good time for me to talk to you about some of this stuff so i don't have to text it necessarily so what i think i would like it this i don't know how easy or hard this is again let me i, I imagine it might not be that difficult i don't know anyways if it can prioritize the um, species pages. So I don't know how that, how does it like a sort function species page? Yes or no. And then prioritize going for the first couple of, of, of lines of text on those pages, which would be Latin name, locality, strain, strain or cultivar, and then common names. If it can prioritize going for that information, I think that would streamline everything else. I think if when you go to search for domino roach, it pulls up the pages that have that in that top section, it pulls up first sorts by, or first pulls up, uh, however it does this behind the scenes, you're the tech guy, not me pulls up things that are filed under species pages and then it pulls up um, stuff that has that information within the top couple of lines. That way when people search for domino roach, it will pull up the species page for domino roaches above all else and exclusively too. So maybe it'll pull up orange domino roach later, but it would perhaps look just for domino roach and only pull up orange domino roach after prioritizing the page that literally just has the two words domino roach. Um, that, that I think everything else would kind of fall in line past that. So maybe that is a nightmare to write. I don't know, but at least there's this kind of, uh, there's kind of slim parameters for it to pr prioritize. I don't, I don't really care much more about, you know, it going deep in that. That's what the sort function is. This sorting categorical function is for people to find this nitty gritty other stuff. But for just, you know, type into the search bar, you want domino roaches getting it to pull up the species page for domino roaches is the top priority for this. Um, because as of right now, again, all the stuff that pulls up pa any pages that I even mentioned something on, like, oh, this is kind of like the care for the domino roach. Um, it pulls it up, and then the actual domino roaches that people might be searching for to buy get lost in all the clutter. So this hopefully will help to reverse that. So it will prioritize the species page for just that species, and then everything else can filter in beneath that. Um, anyways, anything else? Anybody? I'm, I'm still working on the Argala, and I likely will be. Uh, for for a hot for a hot second here, um, so unless anybody knows that the adult, I'm gonna put that the adult males can fly. It's better to be safe than sorry. Adult males can fly. Oviparous. It just makes sense. They must be able to. They have full wings, and the females have full wings, um, and they're a uh, caridid and very small bodies. Standard room temperature. Not picky for airflow, for air humidity, not picky. Substrate humidity, completely moist, one to three inches. Not naturally day active. Burrows into substrate, preferred foods, not picky. Notable adult color, black. Notable nymph color, brown. Not Florida legal, not a hissing roach. Uh, little to no cold tolerance. Um, I'm going to say one to five gallons for a sustaining colony. And again, we go into 
uh, what you're going to use your Agala for. And I'm going to say if you have Regala species Borneo, you can use them as display. Um, mainly because when you feed them, they will come out. Uh, research so somebody can ID them. Blatta composting. A lot of Regala are actually bat cave species and thus uh, suitable candidates for Blatta composting. Good pet since they do live a good while. Not going to recommend as feeders though. And uh, hobby. Recommended for handling? Yes. Willingness to fly? None. Never had a male fly. Ease of culturing? That's intermediate. You can still kind of screw up with their gala sometimes. I did with cappuccino like a half half a year ago. The colony's still re recovering. Roach cro crossing favorite. Do I like ergola? Close Pel ergola species Borneo. Um enough you know i'm gonna say yes i do like them they are one of my favorites cannot infest your house no diapause requirements from asia strain history none available i don't know where these originate from other than them being from borneo um where did i get these from is a good question and when probably a dexter oh i know who i got them from an anonymous source Acquired from an anonymous source circa 2014. My cappuccino come from Matt K. The mysterious entity known as Matt K. Uh, I think... People who want colonies of roaches will be happy with some of the pricing adjustments. In general, most roach pricing is going up, especially for smaller increments. Most isopod pricing is going down, especially for Cubaris, Nasodillo, etc. Porcelio Scaber mutants will continue to go up in pricing. Um, and then for a lot of other stuff, it may be neutral or neutral, uneffective, maybe go up, maybe down. It's hard to say for some other things. Let's see, what's one eighty nine? One eighty nine is Glabrous Crania for Euro. Put that there. Okay, and available. Okay. How about pseudoscorpion prices? Thank you for bringing that up, Satchel. There will be some major overhauls to the way that pseudoscorpions are sold and distributed. In general, the price per pseudoscorpion will go through the roof. And the enclosures will be sold separately, but available on the Pseudoscorpion pages themselves. So Dinochirus arizonensis will no longer come with a complementary culture. You'll have to buy the, the actual container separately. And the pricing for Pseudoscorpions will be probably roughly 5 for $80 for Dinochirus arizonensis. Jonathan Green says, no one likes earwigs. In fact, I would recommend you bring down the price because absolutely no one likes them. I will take those words into consideration, Jonathan. Um, you hater. You uh, hater, not hater of earwigs. The Labradura are doing very well, and I think I failed with them the first time because despite having found them in Yuma, they really don't like to be dry at all. Like They are probably clinging to the burrows that they like distribute between and using any humid microclimate they can find around like human structures and whatnot just to survive out there um, because I'm keeping them very human right now and they're doing very well. And um, yeah, so I, uh, I might I'm, I might even actually switch my initial labis to this new setup. I'm just using like these old uh, jelly containers for the earwigs and that getting really good results from the lab there might change in the summer. Their humidity goes up, blah, blah, blah. 
So maybe I'll do a five and a half gallon and put a polycarb on it over the winter for the Labadura and then um, take it off during the summer so that they get some better airflow. Um, uh -huh, yep, you should just uh, send all your earwigs to me so I can dispose of them. Have I mentioned my, my plot to breed Labadura riparia to the, uh, was it the St. Helens giant earwig size? St. Helena giant earwig size. For you see, uh, my dear associates, uh, for a while, the, uh, the, the only image you could really find of the giant earwigs uh, was this one post of not a dead specimen, but of a, uh, of a, uh, I think it's a model of uh, the giant earwig. And it shows this thing uh, completely covering the dude's hand. And uh, the actual specimens are much smaller than, uh, than this, uh, this fake specimen thing that is shown uh, and you can tell that there the, the, the this fake model on the person's hand is not actually real because the proportions are completely screwed up and upon looking at it again uh how 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 was i deceived how was perhaps anybody else who saw the image deceived by this anyways so uh labrador riparia is actually mm -hmm. You've mentioned this plan. I endorse it. What about Morava? Uh, Morava are doing just... Do I have Morava? Mara, was it Morava Arachidus? Those are doing fine, too, with full ventilation currently. Yeah, Morava Arachidus. Those are doing just fine, as are all my Euborelia doing fine. Uh, the Lab... Not Lab... The Nisolabus I might bump the humidity on. Um... Anyway, so it's St. Helena giant earwig. Um, the forceps are very long and then probably larger in real life because they're not dried up specimens, but 3.3 um, inches long is like that long. So it's about, it's about the length of my ring finger, about the length of that, like that. Um, a Labrador riparia already get pretty large. I think the largest one that I saw was about, let's go to millimeters, probably about 40 millimeters long. So how much longer do I have to go for these guys? How much more upbreeding? And also, it seems that earwigs are pretty variable, 84 millimeters. Hey, we're already halfway there. Nature got us half the way. So... Uh, 40 millimeters is right at the, the on the nail of my middle finger, and 84 millimeters is right there. So we're about halfway there. And I really do think that earwigs are probably prone to uh, size fluctuations as a taxon. Saying this because there's been some great diversity in all my different species cultures of Euborelia, Labrador, and Anisolabus. Between individuals, there'll be some that mature quite larger than the others. Um, he says, after some looking around, Raggy might be pronounced Ragye. Rag is in Ragnar. Gay, G, close to the Y in yes, or the S in pleasure. Um, rag pleasure, sure, rag yay, set elevated in, is like in set or elevated in Swedish set, eh, rag yeah, rag yeah, rag yeah, salgenia, rag yeah, okay, all right, hopefully that'll, that'll stick. Hello, Eric, good to see you. Um, thank you for all your sleuthing, eh? That's very helpful. Maybe we'll get a Swedish speaker uh, eventually, but for now, this is the best anyone has done and probably the most anyone's ever looked into the pronunciation of this Latin name, so thank you. Uh, Eric Matthews, how's the pinch? I don't know, but uh, European earwigs can get you kind of good. I'd imagine that uh, Labadura could get you even better. So, but anyways, I'm working on it. 
We got the first generation of uh, of uh, things I can select from in there. I don't know if I should grab some adults and rear them individually and then separate the adult sizes. or I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm going to work on it. We're going to work on, by the time I die, getting a big old captive line of Labrador, and hopefully somebody will take over upbreeding it when I die. But I think you can get about probably two, three generations a year, so that's pretty reasonable for uh, – a turnover. Um, anyways, with that, I have. Uh, I think I'm going to wrap up the stream, everybody. John Thigree says, you want me to breed a line for St. Helens color, color then to combine them? Yeah! Labradura are very variable, too. Riparia is extremely variable across its range. Uh, they, I mean, there's you just Google Labrador Riparia and you'll see there's sandy colored ones. There's ones with more red. There's some more brown ones. Um, so should this should this should not be a, the color should not be unreasonable. That should be a within three three years maximum, assuming you start with some stock that has a good amount of the base color you want. Um, and then uh, from from there. Uh, size will probably be the, the most time-consuming thing, getting it really bulked up. Who knows? There might be some – you might hit a certain size, and you, you might find that there's a ceiling for that species for some reason, but it uh, depends on the ones you send me. Well, they're nymphs, so I can't tell what colors they are. But uh, I'm sure plenty of people find Labradura around the United States. So my, the ones, the ones uh, from Yuma that I saw were – when I first pulled one out of a rodent burrow, I was like, this is the most beautiful earwig I've ever seen in my entire life. And uh, the ones that I was sent from the Imperial County were not quite as impressive, but they're probably, they fly a long ways in the wild. So I'd imagine they're all, there's there's some good gene flow between different groups of them out there. Um, but anyways, uh, with that being said, thank you everybody for joining me for this work stream. I'll see you all next week, and that will be after Christmas. So uh, Merry Christmas, Merry Holiday, Merry whatever, everybody. I hope you have a good, restful next couple of days, and I will see you all next week for another work stream. Goodbye, everybody.